Hey. <laughs> okay, it works. <laughs> oh, amazing. All right. Uh Okay, okay. I just heard myself back. That's amazing. Woo! Apparently my uh my stream key got changed. All right. <laughs> uh and where I'm just going to twit, twit, Twitter this. Woo! <laughs> And hey, Rihanna, welcome. Well, welcome. <laughs> I, it's 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 been like forever. Wait, hold on. I need to tweet this. Uh, we're uh live hacking on ng hdp two. Uh, I really hope my Twitch key didn't show. <laughs> so apparently, my Twitch key like got reset. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, let's stream. And I was like, no, it doesn't connect. I couldn't figure out why. So I just checked my keys and they were different. So something happened. Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, slash, 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 my name. There we go. All right. Yay. OK. All right. All right. Uh, that should go. This should be here. So. Um, today oh uh happy new year everyone <laughs> um anyway today what what i was thinking um is um uh i've been hacking on this um well i'm really all over the place <sighs> breath breath all right so what i, I want to continue hacking on this library that i've been working on called nghdb2 uh Here's the system version by Alex Crichton, who is part of the Rust core team and it's been like around in the Rust community forever. Uh, we met up in Rome and we created bindings to this thing. Happy January, yay, thank you. Which is called NGHTP2, which um, allows you to parse um, uh, HTTP2 frames. So, uh, the way that works is uh, your computer has like networking and there's a UDP stack and a TCP stack. Uh, stack. Um, and uh, HTTP2 is on top of TCP. So you got like your TCP frames going back and forth, like your TCP, uh, what do you call them, packets? No, that's IP packets, I don't know. Um, and this thing sits on top of that. It parses those TCP things um, into meaningful uh, blocks of like, oh, you just sent me a control frame. Oh, you just sent me a data frame. Oh, we're now multiplexing this stuff. So it, it can parse the TCP stream into um, the HTTP2 protocol. Um, currently in the Rust ecosystem, there's uh, this thing called H2, uh, which is an HTTP2 or a uh, Rust implementation of the HTTP2 protocol, um, but very clearly, uh, it does not handle, uh, they're not mentioning it, but doesn't handle push, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, they're not mentioning it. They should though. Um, it is already used by Hipper also. So I, I think they just didn't like update it. Um, but yeah, um, they should handle that. <laughs> um, there's like some extensions to the protocol. So I, I don't know what that is at, but um, it just seems like a good idea to have like uh, this state of the art um, C library bound to Rust so we can like work with it. Um, because for, for the record, uh, NGHTP2 is the library used in Node.js uh, for their HTTP2 implementation and in curl, um, which means it's very widely deployed. Uh, so it should be relatively uh, stable. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, Rust net web slash nghp2. So currently, uh, no, I guess <laughs> I was going to show the website nghp2. Uh, ba, bum, 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 bum. There we go. All right. Uh, yes. All right. So there, this is what we got. This is a repo. I got a whopping eight stars. It's part of the RustNet web working group where we have a few things, mostly my <laughs> my really bad crates. Um, actually, this is kind of fun. There, there's a few things here. Oh, uh, I didn't make this one. I didn't make this one. Technically, I created the repo, but I didn't build anything out of it. 
Uh, Tyler and Lily. You're right about the mic effect. Huh. What mic effect? Also, hey, Tyler. <laughs> nice of you to tune in. Um, you should come on the stream sometime. Um, Tyler lives in Berlin. Uh, he's a friend. Also does Rust stuff. So that's, that's really fun. Oh, good mics is good attention. Oh, I don't remember saying that, but I don't, I don't disagree with it. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, Mark Hidley just subscribed to Twitch Prime. Oh, thank, thanks, Mark. Especially in meetings. Yeah, that's so true. Um, <laughs> people are always like, oh, are you like a professional? I'm like, no, I just have a microphone. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I, I like air. Uh, Twitch shows join dates now if you click a name. Or is it just the mod feature? I can't create it. Oh, that's that's cool. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's pretty fun. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh yes. Um all right, but before we like dive into the NGHP2 crates. Uh oh, this is what I got already, by the way, which is like whole bunch of stuff. I should show you the docs of like this other thing because that's pretty wild also. Can I show it here? I can show it here. Whoa, okay, wait. Webcam. Hello. <laughs> so if, if I click this frame, everything like start, stops working. It's terrible. Um, uh, no, I'm just clicking through it, that's fine. Um, so docs RS docs.rs slash ng lib njhp2 sys jesse skinner happy new year happy new year <laughs> thanks oh hope everyone's new year was good um i had a very quiet new year uh oh thank you um we just stayed at home with the cats. Uh, two friends came over. We watched the fireworks from inside the apartment. Um, and the cats were like super laid back. And they were like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is fine. This is normal. I, I guess they like, they were brought up with Overwatch since they were like six weeks old. <laughs> so I, explosions and loud noises are fine. Um, it was pretty fun. At some point they like went outside on onto the balcony and we got like a cat net there and they were like looking up at the lights and they were like, oh, it's kind of fun. Hmm. Okay, it's kind of echoing. Okay, back inside. <laughs> that was kind of fun. But then, and, um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> oh, hope everyone's new year was good and Christmas and, and just time off. Um, yeah, but, 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 but. So th this is the uh, Rust representation. So the, the, the way this works is there's the, uh, sorry, back, back to NJHP2. Um, there's the NJHP2 C library, uh, which has a header file. Uh, <laughs> Mark says, I'm a wish that they're willing to go on walks. Yeah, our cats are really good. Um, I I feel like a dad. If someone's like, hey, you want to talk about your cats? And I'm like, <laughs> do you want to hear about my cats? Because I won't stop. Um, but yeah, we... <laughs> Got really good cats. They're, they're napping in the tree over there. Maybe they'll wake up at some point and like come over and like chirp a bunch. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, NGHP2. Um, so the, the the way it works is you you got your C library with all your definitions in there, um, which is rather large. Um, it just says like, this is the interface of all these functions. And then you get that thing and then you convert it into um, a Rust file of all the definitions. Then you compile the C library. And then with that Rust file, you can just directly interface into that C blob, basically. And then you include the C blob into your, like your binary and it's it's very compatible. Um, but so that this is like the Rust uh, interpretation of um, uh, the C API. So for example, uh, NGHP2 info, right? Where we have like, oh, it's a struct it has fields where this is an integer, integer, character, character, or like a pointer to a character, which means it's a vector, basically. So there, there's like, uh, what else? Like here's a bunch of enums, right? Pop const ngHTP2 error invalid stream state. Like if we look at the, de oh, uh, docsRS is uh, broken. Um, but th this is uh, an i32 under the hood 
and it just points to a number uh, minus 14 or something. All right, so, um, uh, uh oh, well, that, that, thanks for popping in. <laughs> and thanks for the good luck. Hope, hope you're well. Um, basically, what this is, is in Rust, this would be an enum where all these error kinds, they're different error types, and um, but in, in C, they're, they're just constants and your constants point to the number. So the, the way you figure out what the error was is just by looking at the number, which is not ideal because we, we can abstract it better in Rust. So in our case, what we, for example, have done with all these error things here, all these error constants, is we have the error kind, and it's now just the enum of all these things. And if we look at the implementation itself, then um, uh, here we have the definition of all these things, which is very long. But then we have a, a conversion uh, implement from NGHP2 error for error that allows us to um, take one of these error codes and convert it into uh, an enum member here, which is kind of fun. And also the other way around. Uh, oh, not the other way around, but we, we could do it the other way around. It's just because we never bubble it back down. Um, so what we then have is um, we now have an enum that represents this thing. There's like a few enums in here. For example, stream state. There's like all these stream states. And if we look here at stream state, uh, stream state idle, open, reserved, local, like all of these, again, they form an enum together, uh, but we just represent it as an actual enum. And that, that's how we start creating the abstractions. Um, like as a, as a quick little primer onto how these things work. So that's like for enums. Uh, a bit trickier is how to do structs. Um, so in, in Rust, the struct is kind of like a class in some other languages. Um, for example, JavaScript wor works similarly. Because you, you uh, does it work similarly? I don't know. Uh, not necessarily. Um, well, I'm just thinking right now. <laughs> so the, the, the idea of a class is you have some data that's contained and then a bunch of methods uh, on top of it. So you have like an entity um, that can like interact with the internal data. You can call methods on it. You can pass it some stuff and do some stuff. Um, C does not have a notion of uh, classes. Um, so the way it does this is, for example, um, there's the ngh 2 session, which is an empty type. doesn't contain anything. It's completely empty. All we did internally is uh, use a marker. Um, and then here you have uh, NGHP2 session callbacks new. Callbacks set on, callbacks like all these things. And all these, uh, there's like more session methods over here. Terminate session, right? Um, all of these, their first argument is a mutable pointer into the session type, which you pass along. Um, and usually like some, some other stuff also. Uh, so that's how you do your classes. Instead of like having an object or having like a struct with the classes or with the methods implemented on them, you have um, your struct and functions that take that as its first argument. So it's, it's a bit more manual, um, but translates really nicely into Rust. So here you can see this does nothing uh, except it takes a, a, the session type as its first argument, like a session instance. It's a pointer into the session. Um, here it documents which errors it can create and when it should be called. And I, ideally, um, we can turn this whole thing into like a state machine where um, certain states are irrepresentable. For example, after this has been called, it should consume self or something like that, right? Um, where the um, all these like things in the docs, uh, which we call invariants, uh, then become um, uh, how do I say that they they become encoded in a type system. For example, uh, invalid state automatic window update is not disabled, so we could encode in the type system. Hopefully, if we might might be tricky this one, uh, but with, with if we're clever about the generics, and we'll have to see if, if that's a good idea we can encode uh, that this method cannot be called if um, uh, the window update is set in a particular uh, state. Or maybe we just make it return a result. Uh, 
of error. Like, hey, this was unsuccessful because of this. Be better is if we can like encode a type system though. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that's that. Um, so what we have so far is we have all of these structs, uh, all of these enums, uh, some other stuff like settings ID, which is just a U32 stream ID, which is the I32. Rihanna says, that's a lot of functions. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't expect we'll be able to finish today, uh, but porting it is relatively straightforward. It's just like so much stuff. Um, and then encoding the um, the relationships between all of these data structures is a lot harder even. So I'm, I'm thinking of doing like a, um, a two-tiered proposal where first I encode all of these into their safe variants. Um, so all of this stuff becomes just safe. And then either I create new structs that wrap around them and uh, then code like all the invariants inside of it. Uh, so like, hey, uh, this method can't be called if the stream state is in this state, right? And then the type system checks it at compile time and you can never get it wrong. Uh, either in the new, new struct that does that or in the existing struct. It's a bit of a question how. Um, also, all of these have like callbacks everywhere, um, which is like you call a method and you set the callback in a separate method. Maybe that should be one method where you, you have the um, set on frame receive callback, set on invalid frame receive callback, right? So that's a um, basically an asynchronous. Um, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah. So the, these two, they're uh, both part of the receive callback. So a set receive callback has this one, has this one, has this one, and all three could maybe be set when you set the receive callback or, you know, th think of ways in which we can make this a true like API that, that you can navigate just by trying out stuff rather than like needing to memorize which method you can call before which other method and looking at it at a runtime, it's just like giving you errors. Uh, it's It's nice. If the only person that ever needs to figure this out in the Rust ecosystem is me, <laughs> like we just we just encode it, get it right, and everyone can use it. That that's that's basically the uh, the idea here. Um, so let's go to the repo. All right, can can people read this by the way, or is it too small? Um, because I I feel the font size like a lot smaller than it usually is, which is a, a bit unfortunate. Tyler, Tyler says, yeah, I can read it. That's good. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, I would imagine people reading on mobile um, might have a bit more trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, a problem with uh, Alacrity is that I don't know how to configure it correctly. I think I might have upgraded it and now I changed it. Um, but figuring that out will like take half an hour. It's not very interesting. So I, th I think we'll just have to wing this if at least it's partially readable. All right. So we have cargo check right here, which works. Cargo doc dash dash open, which also works. Oh, and then we get this. All right. That's not awesome, but whatever. Uh, control plus. All right. That doesn't work. Ooh, thank you, Tyler. All right, a little bit, a little bit bigger. All right, just a little bit bigger. Uh, okay, okay, I'm I'm upping it just slightly. All right, <laughs> and thanks, Tyler. That, that's useful. Wait, does it even work here? Oh, wow, it works again. That's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, boom, 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 boom. All right, so I left it somewhere. Let's look at the last commit. Session upgrade function. Uh, to do make safe uh, upgrade. All right, 
So that's in the which file session.rs. Oh, also useful is to like show the um, file structure. We have the source directory uh, where we have frames, where all the frame types are gonna go. So the um, HTTP2 spec works in, uh, has streams that has frames. I forget how they're related again. I should read the spec sometime. But I, I remember that there's separate things, which is useful enough. And NGHP2 has a, a notion of a session. So it starts at the session. Uh, you initialize a session. Um, and then you can either turn it into a server session or a client session. So that's where the, the split comes in. Basically, one, one becomes an HTTP client, the other one becomes an HTTP server. Uh, separate things, separate uses. But um, yeah, we're just not going to bother for it, with it for now. Um, and then you initialize all the things you want to initialize. And you can start feeding it like data. Uh, and then through the callbacks, uh, different frames pop out. So you can get like your data frames, you can get your control frames, you can get like other stuff. Um, and I believe the data frames come with streams or either you have a stream that creates the frames, something like that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, so right, right now I'm working on the, um, on the session type, uh, and getting the methods in there. So the first thing I implemented is drop for session. Uh, so NGHP2 has a notion of, uh, delete the session. It says after you're done with the session, you should delete this, uh, the session. Cause it, it might be allocating internally or something like that. I don't know, but, uh, it maps really nicely to drop. <laughs> So what happens in Rust is when a variable goes out of scope, so you've got like your block, and then uh, if it's not returned from that block, uh, we say it goes out of scope. And once it goes out of scope, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I just said like burritos again, or sorry, tacos. What? No. Yeah, burrito. <laughs> and beans, they, they always like do a bit of a number on me, but they're so delicious. Um, but anyway, if, if, if a thing has drop implemented on it, it will be called. Um, that's usually for like cleanup methods and other things. Um, can't return anything, but it does have a mute, mutable uh, reference to itself. So in this case, we um, just drop the value, basically. Uh, we just cl clean up all the, all the um, things that are left. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So that, that was fairly straightforward. Um, all the, oh, of note, all the functions that have like a um, little warning sign behind it, they're unsafe functions, so we need to wrap it in an unsafe block. Um, so we had like two more functions that were fairly straightforward. Um, the send callback, uh, the receive one. Like the, these don't do too much. All we do is we call it, we pass a reference to its internal, and then we say uh, we match the error code and turn it into like a result of either like one of our error kinds or um, just the okay of nothing, right? So uh, the, the result here can be um, tried. And by try, I mean like the, the question, ah, the question mark operator. Um, same for send, sends pending frames to a remote pair. Now con consume is a bit more interesting. Uh, is it? No, yeah, because we, we need to pass it two things the size and the stream ID. So that's fairly straightforward because the, those map really nicely. It's just a, a I32. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, now upgrade is the, is the method I'm currently working on. So what it takes is it takes a, a five argument. Hey, Dan, welcome back. And yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> it has been a while. I'm, I'm very happy to like be doing this. I, I want to do this a bit more frequently now. Uh, so the session upgrade takes again a kind of reference to um, the option struct, session struct, sorry. Uh, it takes a payload and a payload length. So this is, um, actually we should call this payload pointer. So it takes the payload pointer and a payload length and that reads uh, uh, bytes from the start of it till the end of it. Um, reads not writes, so it's it's not mutable. Uh, bu -bu -bu. 
I'm having like a very bad hair day. I was supposed to go to a barber like last week, but then the barber was sick, so I couldn't like go anywhere. So I'm just like, uh, everything. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's me being vain. <laughs> Dan says, hope you had good holidays. Yeah, thank you. Hope you had good holidays too. Uh, yeah, so it, it takes a pointer, it takes a length, and it just reads those bytes. That has a head request, uh, which is a number. So um, either a zero for it's okay or one for it's not okay. Um, I wonder if we can like head request, if we can just call dot into into it. So it turns it into like a C int or something. Or like a U8. It's just a flag, but the C API requires it to be um, of a number kind. And the REST API works better with a Boolean. Ideally, we could create this into a separate method um, where we have one that says upgrade with a header or something. Um, and then the data payload can only be of like type head, something like that. Um, but we, we can leave that for now. We're just going to like do a good translation. Now the, the question, the final thing that requires this whole function to still be unsafe is the stream user data, which uh, takes a void pointer, but it can mutate the void pointer into uh, pointing to a separate struct. So in essence, uh, stream user data should be an option where uh, an option of a box user data or something. So I, I, I don't know what the type of user data is supposed to be. Other than it just says, hey, it's, here's a void pointer. So, you know, we, we need to read the docs um, to figure out what that is. So we go to the upgrade, session upgrade. Um, no, upgrade to upgrade. libngp 2 upgrade to, because this one is deprecated. Um, what's the difference, actually? Stream user data, sans payload, payload length. And this one also takes a head request. All right. Uh, pass non-zero value to this. Right. So then they just add it. So stream user data. <laughs> All right. So let's read this. I'm, I'm just going to walk you through like how I'm porting these things because I would imagine it's useful. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is kind of like my job right now, I guess. <laughs> Still need to sign a contract for it, but um, it's most likely just gonna go through. So I actually get paid to like work on this stuff. Uh, right. Um, but yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, so if called from client side, the things payload must be a uh, value set, sent in HP2 settings header field. It must be decoded by base64 URL decoder. Jesus Christ. Uh, it called from client side. Wow. The settings payload length is the length of settings payload. The settings payload is unpacked. Its settings values will be submitted using NGHP submit settings. So from all, all what it seems is we need to create a settings type uh, a header somehow. Base64 encode it and send it in as a byte vector. Sorry, as a byte slice, um, and then submit it. So in all, all reality, this should be um, an option. Must be the value sent. Uh, right. All right. So some something. Oh, here we go. If called from a server side, the settings payload must be the value received in HP2 settings header field. It must be decoded by base64 URL decoder. The settings payload is the length of the settings payload. Uh, must be decoded, must be decoded. Wow, all right. It's true as if the settings frame with a payload was received. This callback functions for uh, will be invoked. The stream with stream ID one is opened. Uh, the stream user data is ignored. The open stream becomes half closed, remote. Uh, the open stream becomes half closed local for its stream user data. All right, so we just do a quick search for this. 
get stream user data, set stream user data. So I, I, I have no idea how that works. Uh. I guess we'll need to read these two methods. Um. <laughs> um, yeah. So apparently two things happen there and I, I'm not sure what they do, what the type ought to be. It, it needs to be an option for sure. Um, in parameters, none. All right, so let's look at these two. Uh, get return stream user data for stream stream ID. The stream user data is provided by NGHP to submit requests, submit headers, set stream user data. Unless it's using, if the stream is initiated by a remote endpoint, stream user data is always null. If the stream does not exist, function returns is null. All right, so it sets it. What does it set? Again, it takes session and stream ID, sets the stream user data to a stream denoted by stream ID. If a stream user data is already set by a stream, it is replaced with this new one. It is valid to specify null. Uh, the function returns null if it succeeds. The stream does not exist. Okay. Uh, I still don't know what this does. So is this like to send the body or something? All right, um, session upgrade, stream user data. So let's for now just assume it's an option. Um, stream user data, user data is going to be an option of type zero <laughs> or something like that. I, I don't know what the other type should be. Um, C void. Uh, so let's look. Rest option to void. The empty void type. Cast the C void. Excellent create void void. It was probably years ago, isn't it? Yeah, three years. Set sock opt. True eval. So we can't cast the void. Okay. Um, so we need to create a, a void pointer. Uh, so it either becomes a void pointer or it becomes something else. Uh, bu, 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 bu. what did we say? C void. Let's look at the C void. Implement from for T, trying to borrow, borrow, mute, blanket. Uh, that's not useful. Debug. I'm not C void. C is void return type. Ideally, this type would be equivalent to bang, but currently it may be more ideal to use C void for FFI purposes. Interesting. So the the um, the bang operator uh, means it's irrepresentable. So maybe someday that can be done. I don't know. <laughs> so it says it's irrepresentable. Uh, I don't know how to like do this. Um, lib nghp2. You know what? Maybe for now we just like tape over it. Or just like mutable pointer. Then we say let um, Let stream user data equals that. We add a to do note that says, figure out what this is going to be used for and how to convert to this. Um, void is irrepresentable, but void uh, pointer is not. No, no, no. So Rihanna is commenting. Um, I, I, I think you're saying, saying useful things there. You're saying the type void is irrepresentable, but a void pointer is valid. Um, 
and given that we have a void pointer, um, which is just the address, right? Like the void pointer itself is an actual pointer type, uh, which is 64 bits on my machine. And we're giving mutable access to it. It means that it changes the pointer uh, location into like a valid representation. So we get a pointer back into the user data stream. That's what we get. Hey, th thank you. Um, so we get a pointer back into the user data stream. Yeah. Into Wave's hands. Um, I believe it's a pointer to seek Secfi. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So let's see. Uh, upgrade. Uh, let stream user data equals that. Um, how do you initialize one of these? I'm not sure what the mute means there in Rust. Yeah, that says so. It, it means it's mutable. It's we we give write access to this pointer type. Um, so C can take that pointer type, write to it, and then we get it back um, after it like goes out of scope again. So we, we basically give it an uninitialized pointer. We say like, hey, um, we allocate the pointer for you here. Uh, please change this to where stream user data will be once you're done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so it, it changes into something else. And I, I don't know what it changes into. So C pointer as a pointer. So we get a pointer back, right? Consume a box into raw. Get it from C. Panic as mute my none. All right. Uh, I guess we get from raw parts back or something. Literally use malloc and free from Rust, but C API. How do we check if something is? <laughs> All right. So the pointer type. Uh, see the pointer module is void equals copy none null non zero and covariant swap null equals create a null raw pointer create a mutable null raw pointer I like I love how this is safe is null okay void is there a void version <laughs> okay, th this is pretty interesting. Uh, copy, swap, other stuff. Okay, okay, we're just gonna look at this. This is not gonna work for sure. Rana says, C is kind of safe if you never free memory. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Tyler says, generally let the side that created the thing free it by exposing functions for using the proper allocator on the other side. Yeah, so there, there's an allocator um, function built into this. Um, and it, it can free stuff also. Um, so I, I need to hook into that still. I'm, I'm just doing the um, pointer stuff to as much C void. Yeah, that's probably accurate. In essence, con C is equivalent to C con void and is equivalent to star. Okay. No, no, mut. Void. Mm -hmm. All right, so ellipsy malloc is null, my num is ellipsy void. C void. Quarkify C void. Uh, let's see what cargo check says. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's unhappy about that parameter right there. Uh, okay, we need to delete that and then try again. Sorry about this, like, I'm very new to um, 
getting this stuff to work. Uh, I was pretty happy we got the um, Sang's payload to actually like be a bite slice, because that seems like the right type. Um, self inner, so we delete this. Match res and mute. Void. Okay, so I think you're right where we say we create a new pointer. Pointer new. Standard pointer, pointer new. <laughs> pointer null. Okay, uh, card road check. Uh, let's call this U size. Expect it, pointer, card road check. Uh, mute standard FFI. C void U size. <laughs> nope, that's also not it. Uh, is this it? This much type expect a pointer found U size. So as C F F I let's say again pointer null that's in this one that was in this one uh, lip C as mute lip C my num mute I thirty two ish. If anyone knows the answer, please like let me know. Just like uh, keep typing keys until we find it. Found keyword mute. Left hand side. <laughs> Tyler says, I store pointers as U size in a few places to get around raw pointers not being send or sync, but it's a lazy, evil, bad pattern. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Found mute. Oh, uh, as Lipsy third FFI C void type annotations need account for type for T. Oh, uh, no mute. Unused variable. A. Hey. There we go. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess. If it's not passing from the top, then we can always give it back, not pointer, because a, a pointer is just the value on the um, stack anyway. Uh, so reusing that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Time to compile and run in site fault. <laughs> uh, unsafe. Okay, so this is now safe again. A. Okay, that is safe. Um, is this safe? It 
these things safe? Cargo check. Hey, okay, that's good. I think we break it now. That also still works. Holy shit. All right, that's awesome. Um, to do return initialized uh, option stream user data uh, as. Oh, okay. Is that true? Wow, shit. Tyler, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, from the function. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Try to check. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's look at our code. So now we have our session type. Where's session, session? There. And we have upgrade. Performs post uh, process of HTTP upgrade request. This function can be called from both client and server, but behavior is different. There we go. Now that, that looks like a very rusty API. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's commit this. Uh, make session dot. Uh, upgrade safe and then we push it it's live um, okay so I, I, I think we have this uh, to do create variants for both client and server because they behave differently right so I should probably be like separate methods uh, maybe even like on client and server types um, all right, so next one. We've more or less covered this now. It just works. Uh, I'm still curious what it like, gets turned into though. Because it's a, it's a void pointer, but what do we get back? Stream user data. The open stream becomes a half-closed local state. See if stream user data pointer is still null after a call, so return error. Um, is that so? I believe they work differently though. Uh, there's a version in which it's valid to still be null. Yeah, stream user data is ignored if it's in server mode. <laughs> All right, see, see you around, Rana. Thank you for joining stream. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, Ty Tyler, you, you, you do make a very good point though. Um, like, but yeah, the, the, the kinds are just like different and weird and I'm, yeah. <laughs> the settings panel must be value received in HP2 settings, header must be decoded. So I, I guess it returns a user stream type. So that's, see what the stream type is uh whoop. struct structs and is there oh, and there's rc stream and jhp2 stream shit declaration oh uh Proto state u32. Oh, uh, get stream mut, 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 mut. Stream, there we go. So that's, that's the actual type. Uh, all right. So for completion, we should probably, uh, oh, we already have stream. Stream ID. Uh, uh, stream struct, uh, pub struct, uh, stream. 
actually we, we should turn the name of like stream into like HTTP stream or something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure what type of stream it is yet. Um, and then inner becomes uh, ng HTTP2 stream. Uh, ng2 nghp2 stream uh, derive debug and then we can initialize a new one uh, <laughs> Tyler says going back to work, stream more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Um also you you should totally like come on onto a stream sometime. Um do like a together session or something. Cause I, I I feel there's like tons of stuff you like know a lot about that might be cool to share. But um thank you for joining. <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right. Uh ba -ba -ba -ba. So we implement stream. Uh, we create a new function called new, which returns uh, type self. So that means it returns type stream again. And then we do uh, self inner njhp2 stream. I believe that's how that works. Um, Create a new instance, and we inline this cargo check. Oh, lib ngh two sys uh, and then we have that there, and then we can remove this again. Little duplication con, cargo check, uh, use. Oh, come on. I, looks like, they didn't, like I uh, didn't save my file. So unused, well, initialize the unused field with a Damn it. <laughs> I forgot how to initialize this. Uh, inner, 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 pad length, njhp2 data from inner, self inner, from inner, inner, njhp2 stream session, session. <laughs> okay, I, I guess we didn't create the initialization method. That's weird. Uh, it's like a function that creates a new instance of this. All right, because that, that's the question, right? Like, how do we initialize this? Um, like a size of, and then create this thing as this type or something? Because <laughs> that would be odd. Uh, in in the end, we're just like talking about memory regions, so that would work. But it's super ugly, unused. Um, so um, let's look at Git two the way they do it. 
uh, home, then the type we had is uh, of u u eight comma zero. U8, 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 20, hash, sha, lib, source, ref spec. Oh, we need the sys library. Lib get to sys, build, lib or s. Because it's just a marker. Uh, zero. <laughs> Let's see how they do this. Function, empty function, struct, get enum. Oh, that, that's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> so Alex just hand wrote this, which is really cool. Make their calls, get enum, pub struct, get clone, signature. Uh, IDs, get okay, uh, size T. Whew, trying to figure this out. Um, So, um, yeah, it's a, a good question. <sighs> Sorry. I want to know how to like initialize one of those things, um, which I guess is, Mook City asks, there's no HTTP2 parser in Rust yet. Um, the answer is sort of, there's the H2 crate, but it's not complete. There is no uh, HTTP2 push. There's no, um, to my knowledge at least, because um, H2 does not support that uh, as far as I could find. And we, we do want to have like H2 push. We do want to have like some of the newer features. We would I would love to be able to uh, multiplex uh, web sockets over HTTP2. Node.js can do that and they use NGHTTP2. So I figured um, creating bindings into that seems like a very reasonable idea. Um, it does require us to figure out this FFI stuff, but that's more a bottleneck on myself than it is on the um, on the quality of the thing. So I'm just lear learning <laughs> how to like create create these things um, unused. So we can't initialize like this. Cargo check. Yeah, that's also not gonna work. Missing unused. Looks like he asks, why doesn't the H2 uh, create support that? As in, why not contribute to that instead? Um, that's an excellent question. <laughs> Um, there's reasons for it. It's just that I think that uh, having a REST implementation is a really good idea, but um, not, um, how do you say that? It's it's good to have both options, right? Like the, the H2 create, the maintainers, they work for a particular project and the project has priorities and they're, they're pretty swamped with work already. So I don't suspect that uh, adding more features to there might necessarily be uh, a priority for them, nor would reviewing it. That they're particular about like the way they like the code, the quality of their projects, the structure of their projects, which tools to use, which tools not to use. Right? Uh, I I feel like instead of engaging with that, which might create friction, um, what I want to have is I want to unblock people that want to do HTTP two push. Um, so I'm just reusing an existing implementation. Um, just like why it's a good idea to re-implement uh, OpenSSL and Rust, but also to have bindings into OpenSSL. Um, at that point, people have like a choice of like, okay, cool, which which approach do I prefer? 
Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just more a question of like, I, I like the idea of having alternatives. Um, ideally we could have everything native in Rust, but you know, um, it's not necessarily the only option available to us. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> it's, um, oh, by the way, um, everyone should read this article, which I, I, I think is uh, very good. It goes into um, the way async await is basically going to be structured in Rust. Um, because pe people, um, there's a syntax portion, which has all this stuff about like pinning, unpinning, all the other kind of, kinds of things. Th this is more like what people will be interacting with. Like, how do event loops work? That's basically like, oh, there's three parts to it. There's the um, the bindings to the I.O. layer. Then there's the executor layer. Um, and then there is the futures, which you create. Uh, and the interaction between them is, is interesting. Um, an example of how this works can be found here. Because <laughs> um, the, the, the idea is that um, executors uh, and I IO uh, layers that they, they should be um, interoperable so you can like swap out uh, one for the other. So here we use the futures executor, which comes with the futures package. And we use that. And then uh, we have the IO layer to spawn stuff. And then there is the other crate called uh, JulieX, which is another component. Oh, examples, echo, which allows you to um, multiplex these things over multiple threads. So there's like a third part to it. So yeah, <laughs> I, I think like together uh, becomes pretty interesting. So you, you get to like assemble your scheduling model together and perhaps like eventually we'll get something a bit more convenient. Um, whereas some of these things are like combined but you know, um, yeah. <laughs> for example, for a high level HTTP server, uh, what might be the case is uh, the executor stays the way it is. So people need to pull that one in themselves. And then the TCP listener and the uh, threat spawner, they're combined into one package. So you get like maximum throughput uh, from the TCP server. And you just be get like a await a uh, stream, like an async stream, uh, whatever that's called, async iterator or stream. That's also fair. Um, all right. Now, how do we initialize this? <laughs> uh, so this was created using, um, what's that called? Uh, C Banjin. Uh, Banjin, fifth gen Banjin. Talks about Banjin. Modules, enum variant, latest stable Rust, user's guide. See builder structure for usage, user's guide for additional information, enums. Builder, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, we don't want that. CFFI, router sanity test, create a wrapper, builder as include the bindings. Uh, using unions, using bit fields. Oh, I should have, like, Read this like ages ago. Create a default bit set. <laughs> um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so I, I just want to know how to like initialize those um, zero size structs. Cause they're, they're basically kept around so they don't get compiled out uh, cause that would be bad, but I don't know how to like use them also. Um, copy and clone, replacing one type with another. Okay, that's useless for us. Training type as an opac uh, blob of bytes. Bind gen builder opac type. Um, Whitelisting, blacklisting, publish or crate. Um, FAQ. Um, 
Yeah, okay, excellent question. Uh, whitelisted class. I don't even know what I'm looking at. That's C++, isn't it? Or Java? No, it must be C++. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, add bind gen as a build dependency, create a wrapper H file, create a build a rest file. So I'm trying to read um, latest stable rest. Okay, so Nick does help out on this. And there's source, there's tests. Bind gen integration. Pub wow void. All right, let's see. Um, tests, there's no examples. So what, what I'm trying to look at is the uh, C type uh, U8 comma zero. Oh, there we go. Four declared complex types. Struct, clone, self. Oh, so wait, hold on. If we clone it? Oh, no, no, no. We need an instance first. Standard mem, uh, size of bar, mem align of bar, zero u size. Standard pointer null? What? How do we implement default for bar? Standard mem zeroed. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, fuck. <laughs> this sucks. Um, all right. Self. Uh, how do we create a into this thing? Clone. All right, so we, we just found out that um, the way to U22A1. Have you tried that? Wait, no, I have not. Wait, <laughs> if that's the answer, then I'll be very happy. Um, oh, no, it's, it's a private type, so I, I can't do that. I think, yeah, 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 we can't do that. Uh, but what was it again? Uh, standard mem zeroed. Zeroed. Uh, unsafe. Yeah, sure. Unsafe. Dope. <laughs> This is terrible. Um, I like this a lot. This 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 is not not okay, because essentially we're calling zero dot memory um, of a type that doesn't exist. It's just a marker type. Um, so if we initialize it, it initializes nothing. So it's unsafe, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so we just initialize it. Um, that, th thanks for the hint though. That was the right idea for sure. Um, just the, the syntax and, and the problem slightly different. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am happy we figured this out. Because I'm, I'm guessing, you know, this translates to uh, our session struct also. that's also like a zero type. <laughs> I 
it's like rust is really cool um if you stay like in safe rust but the the second you like i don't know you you look under the rug it's like okay that's what we're doing <laughs> i i like that the compiler seems to be happy about this but you know we're just like enforcing variants uh by hand and crossing our fingers that they like hold but you know it, it could be worse um cargo check uh add constructors for zero size types <laughs> cargo doc uh this is the best <laughs> i'm so happy to wrote a test for this thing um Yeah, there we go, create a new instance. So we create a reference to self. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, what was the one? Do we have stream state? Uh, yeah, we're trying to get stream, the stream struct. Function new, stream. <sighs> create a new instance, the stream struct, nghp2 stream, self inner. Um, Oh, yeah. Now we need to implement uh, from stream state, stream state, uh, data frame, headers frame, headers kind, frame kind. Oh my god. Data frame. There we go. That's That's a lot nicer. Uh, so we can now uh, copy some of this stuff and JHP2 stream. stream data frame slash uh, stream and then that should work I think Cargo check right so we can now convert uh, all of these into all of the others and that's good Version. All right. So we now have our type here that can be converted to and from uh, uh, NGHP2 stream. Doesn't hold any data, and that's fine. Uh, we can also initialize a new instance of it. Okay. Uh, frame kind, stream state, session. Um, wait, I'm going to get myself some more water. One sec. Okay. Uh, are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. Yay. Um, cool. I'll probably need to dash in like half an hour or so. Uh, we'll have been streaming about two hours, which is pretty good. Because um, I got to make dinner and I got to take a meeting and like some other stuff. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're making progress. 
Uh, bu, 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 bu. All right, so we can now initialize this. So going back to our session, right? Uh, the session upgrade, stream user data um, becomes uh, option stream user data. So use create stream. The return type is an option of stream. And then uh, stream user data is still the null nut pointer. Um, and now we need to check the pointer to see uh, and mute t, null mut pointer of t, mute t, uh, p that is null. We can check if it's if it's null. Uh, so if it's zero, so match uh, match stream user data. Uh, stream pointer, we rename that and we rename that. Uh, or if stream pointer that is null, uh, we return none. No more MUT. <laughs> Else we return uh, some uh, fuck, how do we do this? Uh, return sum or something. Uh, stream pointer. <laughs> sum sum. Oh. Okay, of none. Okay, of uh, some. Uh, expect the struct stream stream found pointer. <laughs> Attempted to take value of method is null and type start if I see void. So the question is, we now have a void pointer. Um, <laughs> Is that going to be null or not? And it, this is literally where you get sec vaults. Um, pointer is null free uh, c void core c void. Uh, we'll use it as a pointer as. It's a null mutable raw pointer. All right, so it's just a pointer to a number, I guess. As mute, uh, Damn it, I'm not sure how to do this. Um, that's okay. You know what? I'm gonna leave this for now. 
Okay. No. Uh, I think we get a pointer back, so that would be like that. Cargo check. All right. So I, I, I think this is accurate. But for now, it doesn't give anything back. We'll follow up on that at some point. At least now the uh, type is represented. Uh, implement some branch. Right, so that this will always work, no problems. Um, all the types are correct. Just need to figure out how to like reconvert that pointer. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. The string type as an upgrade signature. All right. Um. Okay, next method. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Get user data. No, this can go, this can go. Um, this can go. So I was working on just going alphabetically through the session uh, things. Session callbacks, new. So the callbacks, session. Client new, session server new. All right, so this takes the callbacks and user data stream, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then they'll send, memsend, receive. What does memsend do? Returns the serialized data to send. Oh, cat. We got a cat. <laughs> I was wondering when they would wake up. Oh. Hi, Nori. Do you want Do you want to say hi to to everyone on Twitch? Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> the cat just plopped down. Wait, hold on. It's very cute. It's just like layered all over um, the keyboard. Well, half over the keyboard. If she really wants pats right now. But I can make her go over there. If I'm a little bit clever about it, she'll relocate. So that's her favorite spot, like right in the center. So she can get like all the attention. Um, I know it. <laughs> It's not quite my cue to stop yet, but it is a cue to like spend one hand patting a cat. Um, all right, so NGHP2 session mem send. Returns the data, ser uh, serialized data to send. Um, this function behaves like session send, except that it does not use the send callback to transmit data. Instead, it assigns the pointer to the serialized data to the data pointer returns its length. The other callbacks are called the same way as they're in the NGHP2 session send. No data is available to send. This function returns zero. Okay. So we uh, um, we can just send data. <laughs> That's awesome. So there's session send, which requires the send callback. Hey, nobody. Oh, I just got a loud meow. I got very much meow that. Okay, now there's a cat on my foot. <laughs> come on, come on. No, no, I can't reach you there. Wait. Come on. Ah. 
I swear. These cats. <laughs> oh. Okay, 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 okay. You're not comfy? All right. Um. <laughs> yeah, good job. Come on. Yay. Okay. Okay, she plopped down. Exactly where I hoped she would. It's her favorite spot because she can get like all the all the rubs and like scrape her little face on the monitor. She's really good. Hello. Um yeah. Oh, she's trying to bite my mask. Um, yeah. So I guess this is the slightly more convenient version where you can just like send data directly. And that's the difference. So we can skip that, I guess. Receive, mem receive. So this just gives us data back. So process data in as an input from the remote endpoint. The in length indicates the number of bytes from the in. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So perhaps the other one is like for uh, a data stream of sorts. I actually don't know what the difference is. I'm kind of speculating right now, but it's fine. Resume data. Are there other ones with mem? No, that's the only two. Interesting. And so then there's resume data. Puts back previously the deferred data frame in the stream ID to the outbound queue. This function returns zero if it succeeds or one of the negative error codes if it doesn't. All right. So um, previously deferred data frame back in the stream. All right. We can trivially implement this. So we're going to get ourselves uh, our reference function that we just copy paste. It's going to it's gonna mostly be the same, just a bunch of boilerplate. Um, then we're going to copy over this, because that's our description. Like that. Uh, that to the unbound queue and then it says um, invalid argument uh, that's the only error so stream ID is the only argument and then we take a mutable reference to self uh, NJHP2 session resume data. And then we take stream ID. And then that's that. Cargo check. Oh, and we need to rename it. Uh, resume data. Cargo check. And now we have a new method added. Resume data. Okay. So that was resume data. Uh, want read. It was pretty cool. So we can tell. Uh, uh, whether or not it wants to re receive data from the remote peer. And if uh, both want read and want write uh, return zero, the application should drop the connection because it doesn't want to read or write. Uh, so that's a that's a useful question to ask. Like, hey, do I want to read or write data? And if neither of those are true, then you know it's time to to uh, 
stop. <laughs> Bum, 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 bum. Uh, okay. NGH P2 session one trade. So again, we just go over this, copy that. We say uh, we're turning Boolean. So it returns uh, true if the session wants to receive data from the remote peer. No errors. So we're just going to call this want read. And it returns bool. Uh, want read. We remove that and then we say match res. So if it's zero, it's true. It's one, it's false. Cargo check. Oh, NJHP2 session one trade. G. Oh, uh, uh, one trade returns non zero. All right, so that's false. That's true. Cargo check. And then we can duplicate this method again. I think so. That's one trade. Want right wants to send data to a remote peer. Oh. Send to a remote peer. Oh god, there's another. It's the same cat. <laughs> hey cat. Oh. All right. So, someone uh, napped all day and really wants attention. <laughs> She's like walking around, brushing up against my leg. <laughs> I think it's very cute. Um, oh, who's online? Hey, thanks everyone for being in chat. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> um, all right. So want read, want write. Right, there we go. Cargo check. Now we have those two. Do you want to say something in the mic? Poker, poker, poker. Nori, come. Make your, make your little cat bed. Yeah. Oh, oh she just wants pats. Um. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Maybe we have. And I need to. I want to click it. All right. Yay. Okay. <laughs> the the thing is the reason why I'm like not stopping too much is because this happens every single day and every single day she wants pats or the other cat wants to play or they want something. And they get attention, but. If, if I was giving them attention all day, I would never get anything done, so blub. <laughs> all right, so get stream user data. 
return stream user data from the stream stream ID. The stream user data is provided by NGHP2 submit request. All right, um, session stream ID. So we get data from the stream, okay. Burger love, duh. Oh. <laughs> I know how you feel. That's how I feel. Especially cute when they like go and groom each other or they nap together on a bed. Still sometimes like just hold paws. It's like two little cats and it's very cute. Or at night, um, Jashu, the other cat, she'll come over with like her dragging her toy, and, like drop it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. And then, you know, you play a little bit. At some point, you get tired and you put it down. And she like picks the toy back up, tries to find my partner and like walks to my partner and drops the toy again. It's like, play now, please. <laughs> or if one of us is asleep and the other one's like in the living room, then she'll 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 know how to find us. Um, cats are scrunching. I think I might like need to feed him some food soon. All right, so get stream user data, set stream user data, get user data, set user data to session overriding the existing user data specified in client new or server new. Get outbound queue size. Um, return the number of frames in the outbound queue. This does not include deferred data frames. That's cool. Okay, we can do this. Um, that's going to be the last one, I think. So the, the, the way I do this porting thing is um, I just start with um, the simplest thing first, like cover as much ground as I can. Uh, because I, I, I know the, um, that the, the core abstraction is just uh, mostly a matter of translation. Um, and only once we have the full breadth of the API can we like start to abstract that away into like a state machine so you can't get, uh, get the wrong states in. But uh, translating all this stuff, doing the whole like glue between C pointers or between uh, the C API to more or less idiomatic Rust, um, it's just translation. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the the more we get done, the better it is. Because I, I I know for sure that you know it's it's not gonna be good to use until we're like all the way done anyway. Um, so yeah. If that makes more or less sense. Um, returns true. All right. So our description is return data frames. Oh, I keep clicking that. I can just go. <laughs> uh, returns the number of data frames in the outbound queue. Does not include deferred data frames. Uh, get outbound size or in rust we just call it outbound queue size and set outbound queue size or get set but it's fine uh, whoops uh, let me call this method uh, we return a u size Um, like that, like that. Cargo check. That change. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So this just needs to be like that. Cargo check. All right. Guys, all right, that's it. So yeah, um, what we did today is uh, we just translated a bunch of like these things. I still don't know how to do like the uh, um, the pointer stuff, but I can just ask someone on Wednesday. There's going to be a meetup, uh, like a hacking thing, and I bet Tyler, for example, will be there, and I just get to sit down with someone who actually knows that stuff and unblock that because there there aren't too many gotchas, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's mostly it for today. Um, thanks everyone for coming out. <laughs> I think we streamed for like a good 
hour and 40 minutes. That's not bad. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go feed the cats. I'll probably do one of these again, like next week sometime. Um, given my contract goes through, because I'll, I'll have time to actually do these things while I work on this. Um, 